From Central Christian Center in the heart of Joplin with a heart for the four state comes to strengthen our wings with Pastor Hank DeLock. Listen closely as Pastor Hank shows us God's heart and helps us to understand God's will for our lives. Psalms uh, 75, verse 6 and 7 says this. Where is Psalm 65? Seven? Oh, there it is. It says, For exaltation comes, from the e- comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts one down and exalts another. You know, uh, our... Our, our country, you know, we know we've got lots of problems. And there's lots of problems in the world. And uh, You know, any, any, all through the Bible, all through time, any time a country began to uh, leave God out of, of everything, things began to turn for them. And, uh, you know, I... I I know. Uh, now this is now this is this is where we all get a long face, long face, and and we all go, oh, the country's so bad, and uh, you know everything's going so. Wrong. How many know we got some rough times? Uh, we've got some. Uh, we've got a lot of people that don't agree with these two presidents I just quoted, and uh, you know. But the truth is, God's still God, and He's going to be God, and. Um, so I'm going to take a little different tone down. I'm not going to I'm not going to sit up stand up here and talk about how bad everything is and and uh, how many how many know things have been better for us as a nation. Uh, I'm not going to stand up here and go into the gloom and doom and and all the rest of that. But but I will start with this verse in Second Chronicles, verse seven fourteen. Hi Bill, good to see you, man says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Or that, that actually means then I will hear them from my place in heaven and I will forgive them their sins and I will heal their land. Holy Spirit, Help me for a minute or two here and just say what you want to say. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. If my people. You know, now, now, how many know that we have a tendency, we're able to read the Bible, and, and uh, we have a tendency to just kind of push, push everything off so in, in a different direction. And we, you know, I, I've heard people say, you know, oh, if, if, if Christians will just pray and if they'll just, if they'll just seek God and, 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 and you know, every, everybody's, you know, we, everybody's, I had a gentleman come up to me uh, not long ago. He doesn't go to church here, but he began to say, oh, what we need is, what we need is men and women to have the power of God again. What we need is to see miracles. And what we need, what we need, you know, and the whole just of what he was saying was is, is, is uh, everybody's, everybody's off track. Everybody's astray. And I, and I thought about that while he was talking. And I said, you know, I said, well, because he, he, his, his whole just was, you ought, to, you ought to preach on that. You ought to talk about that. You know, and I thought, so I just looked at him. I said, well, hold it, hold it. I said, let's quit blaming everybody else. I said, what are you doing? I said, do you, uh, do you, are, are you laying hands on the sick and getting them healed? Or are you doing anything? What are you doing? I mean, are, are, you know, you, you think we ought to have this power. Do you have this power in your life? You know, it's so easy to say, oh, our country's just gone astray. People don't want to hear the Lord anymore. People don't want the things of God anymore. Those things of God aren't important to them anymore. Well, now, hold it. I beg to differ. I love the Lord. Don't you? The things of God are important to me, aren't they, you? I'm not going to backslide, are you? I'm not going to turn away from God, are you? See, what I think we ought to do is just say, hey, you know. He says here, if my people. And so we say, well, if we could just get everybody organized and get all the Christians, get them all to pray. And, you know, let's get all the churches to pray. And, and I believe that's good and I believe that's important and I believe that's necessary. 
But let me ask you a question. Are you a people? How many here is a people? Are you, are you a God's people? How many here is a God's people? Then he could actually say about you, you're my child, right? How many he could say that about you? Well, then let's make this personal. If you, if I will pray, if, 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 if I will call, if I'll humble myself, if, if I will seek His face, if I will turn from my wicked ways, He'll save my land. Let me ask you something. If you prayed, would He hear you? You know, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous person avails much. Or in other words, the the prayer of a righteous person is is very important. It it carries a lot of weight. It gets God's attention. it, it, It does much good. You say, well, yeah, but I don't feel very righteous. I know, and 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 none of us would be righteous if it wasn't for Jesus. But Jesus made us righteous. So, you know, I'm trying to get in the habit of every time, every time, remember last week we talked about the, the, the enemy going around like a roaring lion and talking about how he gets us through our thinking and through our minds. And, 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 and you know, I, I'm, getting, I'm starting to get in the habit here of every time, every time he starts telling me about how unworthy I am and all that, I go, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Because I am. Man, I'm a mess. Well, if I got what I deserved, I'd go to hell. If I, I mean, I, I am pitiful. But you know what? I traded all my bad for all Jesus' is good. <laughs> it's grace. You can't earn it, you know. And so you can go ahead and keep feeling bad if you want to, or you might as well feel good, you know. So, so my point of that was is you're righteous. Not, not because of you, you're righteous because of what Jesus did. And he says your prayer is very, very important. It's, it carries much weight. It does much good. Hmm. So, I don't know, we can talk about how bad it is or we can make a difference. You know, I believe, I believe collectively, I believe as we pray for our country, I believe that makes a difference. I believe, I believe God, I, I believe America can still have her best days ahead of her, not behind her. I still, I still would rather live here than any place in the world. And so I think that's important. But you know what? I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to make this personal because I'm saying, you know, hold it, God. If I pray, you listen to me. Everybody say, if I pray, you listen to me. If you don't get anything else but that revelation today, that'll help you. So, so, you know, hold it. I know things are bad, and I know, I know the morals are going, going south, and I know everything's bad, and you know what? But, 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 but what's my stand? What's your stand? You know, a nation doesn't get in trouble because the government does this or does that. A nation gets in trouble when the things of God aren't important to them anymore. When the, when the morals aren't important, when the Word of God doesn't fit anymore. Well, you know, we can, we can major on that or we can say, but hold it, you know, the things of God do mean something to me. Huh? The, the Word of God is important to me. And so I, I guess, you know, we make this personal. Day. What's your stand? What's your stand? And can God save the land? I think collectively we can get Him to save the land. But, but, but what's your land? Don't you have some land? God save my land. Save our land, but save your land. I got to thinking about this. Has God ever, has God ever intervened when everything looked bad? How many agree that, that things look bad today? And if you want to, man, I mean, you can just get, you can turn on the news for a while and just get discouraged, can't you? Huh? 
I mean, it seems to me, it seems... Did you ever notice how we are being bombarded with gloom and doom and uh, all the, you know, all the bad things? It seems like, it seems like a spirit of fear has come over Christians. The whole nation, but I'm just dealing with Christians here for a minute. Uh, you know, God didn't say if everybody in the, everybody in the country straightens up, I'll save their land. He just said, if my people will. My people will. Uh, I won't ask anybody here, got a little straightening up you need to do? I, 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 the good thing about, that, good thing about that, that verse is he still calls us his people. Huh? How many ever thought if you messed up, boy, you've blown it, and now you're going to go to hell, and God's mad at you, and all the rest of this? He still called us his people, even if we were messed up. In fact, we were messed up when he sent Jesus to help us. But see, now we're making it perfect. He just said, if my people. But it seems like, it seems like, did you ever notice we're afraid? It seems like there's fear being, we're being bombarded with fear and we're afraid of, we're just afraid of everything. Now we cover it and we, we, we have attitudes and all that, but, it, but, it, but we're, we're afraid of, it seems like we're afraid of everything. Uh, Democrats are afraid of Republicans. Republicans are afraid of Democrats. And we're all afraid of Obama. Huh? And, we're, and we're all afraid of Obamacare and all the, you know, we're afraid of the laws and, and, and we're afraid of, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're afraid that Social Security is going to run out. Uh, we're, we're afraid that, we're afraid that our, our retirement isn't going to hold out. Uh, we're afraid? We're afraid that, 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 our, that our monetary system is going to fail? I mean, gosh, what if we don't have any oil? And, 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 and the market plays on our fears. And every time, I mean, they can, they can shoot a firecracker in, 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 in Iraq where we don't even get any oil from, and our, oil, our gas will jump 20, 30 cents a gallon. Huh? Well, I'll tell you how to fix that. Just quit driving. Don't drive so much. Because if you'll notice, every time the demand gets down, it's amazing. The same stuff's still going on over there, but every time the demand goes down, the price comes down. You see, we're operating in fear. We're afraid of everything. We're, we're, you know, we're afraid of terrorists. We're afraid of, of Al-Qaeda. We're, we're, we're afraid of every boogeyman around. I mean, what, how are we going to make it? I mean, what, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? How are we going to make it? Oh, and every, time, and, and, and every time we see a cloud, we're afraid of a tornado. And, 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 and every, you understand what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is masterfully de- designed to maneuver and manipulate our lives. And folks, there's a million reasons. And there's a, there's, there's, there's a million variables. And, and there's all kinds of reasons why we won't make it. But there's one reason that we will make it. His name's Jesus. Huh? <laughs> there's, one, there's one reason we will make it, because we have a God that says, If my people will... I will. Could he, could, he bless, could he bless in the middle of a crisis? What if, you know, what if the government doesn't straighten out? <laughs> Somebody said, fat chance that'll happen. What if, what if the government doesn't? Well, we, I believe I can pray and make a difference. I believe I can show up and vote when it's voting time and make a difference. 
I think I can take a stand. And just because I don't care who doesn't want to live for God, I do want to live for God. I don't care who doesn't like the Word of God, I do like the Word of God. And if they can tell everybody why they don't like it, I can tell everybody why I do. But what if? What if the, what if the, the monetary system as we know it did collapse? Has God ever taken care of people in crisis, in bad times? Has God ever, David said, I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen, never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen their children begging for bread. I, I just want to, just, I'm just talking today uh, about my land and your land. I got to thinking about this, and and I and I've been wanting to I've been wanting to point a few verses out here in in Exodus, and so I just will, if I can find them. You know how, how many how many know the story of whenever and I'll I'll hurry here real quick. But how many you know I just thought God, have you ever taken care of your kids in the middle of problems? Have you ever taken care of your kids when everything looked impossible? Have you ever delivered your kids when everything else went down the tube? And I thought the Bible's full of those stories. And the one I love is whenever all the children of Egypt or Israel were in, in bondage to Egypt, they'd been slaves in Egypt for 400 years. And Moses, God tells Moses, I want you to go and tell the Pharaoh to let them go. And I love the story. How many, how many remember the story of the ten plagues? And I'll just <clears throat> talk here real quick, but but you know, God told Moses told him, said, uh, let my people go. And, they, and, and, of course, the Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. And so, so these ten plagues, the first plague I loved, it was the, it was, well, I didn't love it, but it was the water becomes blood. And I, you know, you remember the story? Uh, all the rivers, all the seas, all the lakes, all the ponds, Everything, all the water became blood, and, and, and they didn't have anything to drink. I, they, were, they, were, they were digging trenches around the, the, the lakes and stuff to try to get a little water to, 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 to drink. And, and it says all the fish died and they stunk. I don't know, I, when I was reading some of these things here, I thought, we don't have it so bad after all. The next thing, after, after all the fish died and, the, and everything was stinking, frogs showed up. And not just a few frogs, but there's frogs everywhere. It says, says abundantly. There was frogs abundantly. It said they, said they were, they're, they're, they were in, their, in your house, in your bedroom, in your bed, in your, in your servants' houses, in your, uh, in your ovens. How would you like that? Open up your oven and it's full of frogs, in your kneading kneading bowls, uh, you know, you can reach in there to get a pan or something, cook with, it, and it's full of frogs. So you got all the the waters, the waters blood, and the fish are dead, and they're stinking, and you got frogs everywhere, and then and then then some lice show up, and it's not just a little bit of lice. It says it, it says the dust of the earth became lice, folks. That's a lot of lice. And if that's not enough, then all these dead things and all these frogs and all the frogs were dead and everything was stinking and all the lice was on everybody and they were itching and their hair was falling out and now the flies come. They're not in a very good, they're not in a very good position here. But I wanted to read you a verse here, what God said in the 8th chapter of Exodus, verse 22. He says, now all this is going on, right? You with me? You drinking blood? You smelling dead fish? Huh? You got lice, frogs, dead frogs everywhere. They're piled up. And God, in, in, in the middle of this, God says, And in that day I will set apart the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there in order that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the land and I will make a difference between my people and your people. Did you get, did you, did you get the drift of that? 
In the middle of all this stuff, God says, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something. I'm, I'm going to protect my people. I'm going to show you something. Everybody will see there's a difference in serving God and not serving God goes on and, and, and the next thing that comes along is all their livestock get diseased. And, and, and God says this in the ninth chapter of Exodus. He says, And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing shall die of all that belongs to the children of Israel. Wow. Things looking pretty bad. But God says, yeah, but I'll make a difference with my people. I'll, 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 I'll protect my people. I'll raise my people up in the middle of that. And verse 6 says, and, and all the livestock of Egypt died, but the livestock of the children of Israel, not, did, not one died. Everybody say, not one died goes on and, and if, if everything else hadn't bad enough now they get boils <laughs> uh, and, 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 if, and if that's not bad enough then hail comes and, 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 and everything's beat up anybody ever seen a hailstorm? now imagine this hailstorm. there's not nothing left when this hailstorm gets done but in verse 26 he says and in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. There was no hail. And it goes on, and then, then, then the, the locusts come, and what the, if there happened to be anything green left after the hail, the locusts came and ate it. <laughs> And then it got dark, total dark, so dark you couldn't see each other. And this is what 10th chapter, 23rd century says. It says, they did, they, it was so dark they did not see one another, nor did they see, did anyone rise from his place for three days. It says, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. Now, I'm just trying to point out some things here. Because then the last one is, we know, the, the, the Passover, and, and the, the firstborn of every, everything was going to die, and, and, and uh, the first child of every family, the first, uh, the first animal, the, the, every, every, the first fruits of everything, was firstborn of everything, animal and human, was going to die. But in verse 7 he says, But against none of the children of Israel... Shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel? I, I just thought about that. Can you tell much difference today in a child of God and somebody that's not a child of God? Huh? And, 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 and I'm, just, I'm just thinking about it because I've been, I've been more guilty than anybody or as guilty as everybody. But you know, uh, uh, to hear some Christians, there's not much difference. I mean, we're, 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 we're fumbling around here. We don't know if God's doing this, the devil's doing it. We don't know what's going on. You know, I, I'm not going to debate the issue on the plagues and whether God sent the plagues and all the rest of this. And, you know, the Bible seems to indicate he did. But, but, but you know, the truth is God's not doing the bad things to you. God's not causing, God's not causing this nation to crumble. I heard somebody say, and, I, and I'm still thinking about it, Heard somebody say, if God doesn't judge America, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And some guy that was sitting there with him and said, well, if God does judge, he'll have to apologize to Jesus. Now, I'm still rolling that around. But you know, 
I, I, I'm not debating judgment because I believe judgment's automatically on sin. I believe that's why God's telling us to sin no more, to get away from it, to change our lives. But, but you know, my Bible tells me God loved the world so much that He sent His Son so nobody would have to perish. But you know what I'm finding out from this book? I've got a God. I know there's all kinds of reasons why we shouldn't make it. But I've, I'm finding out in this book that it tells me if I trust God, I will make it. Hey, all this stuff might happen, but it's not coming to me. The economy might fail, but I won't. Now put yourself in that, in that place. Why? Because my trust is in Him. My trust is in Him. Now, now He'll use your job. He uses the economy. He uses all that stuff. But I'm telling you what, if things get so bad that you don't know what to do, you still can trust Him. Well, I know I've, I've jumped around a little bit this morning, but I just see everybody wringing their hands and Folks, if you're a Christian, they're supposed to be able to look at us and see something different. You know, that's one of the reasons God wants to bless you. is so people out here that need to be blessed can see that the hand of God on you is working. They need to be able to see that you and that, that me, that, that we're going through the same kind of things that they're doing, but there's some kind of supernatural, some kind of divine protection. There's, some kind, there's just something different about those folks. And the only way, if the world is ever going to see a difference, they're going to have to see it in us. So you know what, I, 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 things might be bad, but I don't think they're so bad after all. We've got all kinds of stuff going on, but you know what, a thousand might fall here, and a ten thousand might fall there, but it's not coming near me. Why? Because I'm trusting God. Because I'm trusting God. Everybody else might lose their job, but I'm trusting God. Everybody else might have all this stuff happen to them, but I'm trusting God. And even in the midst of it, He'll protect me. Even in the midst of it, He'll show me. Even in the midst of it, He'll work it for my good. Even in the midst of it, He'll, he'll, he'll cause a way for me to be able to handle it. I want to give you an opportunity if you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart if you don't know for sure that Jesus is your Lord I'll give you an opportunity right now to do that if you don't know for sure and you want to know for sure just pray this little prayer with me right now Jesus I want to be saved I ask you into my heart forgive me of my sins I want to live for you I need your help Thank you for saving me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, there's a number at the bottom of your screen. If you dial that number and tell the counselor we have some information we'd like to give you, <clears throat> help you get on your way with the Lord. And, you know, uh, if you don't go to church anywhere, I believe it's important that you be in church. And, and uh, if you don't have a church or don't go anywhere, let me invite you to come down to Central and be part of what God's doing here. Hey, uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I think God will touch you, and, and that's, that's what it's all about. Hey, I want you to know that I love you. More important than that, I want you to know that God loves you. If you don't attend church regularly anywhere, I'd like to invite you to come down to Central Christian Center and just be part of what God's doing here. We're a growing family, and uh, we'd, we'd just love for you to come and be a part. We have three main entrances into our building. One's at uh, 410 Virginia, one's at 428 Virginia, and then we have one on Main Street that's 415 Main. Uh, it's easy to get in, it's easy to find it. We have plenty of parking, and so we just like, I think it's important that you be in church somewhere, and if you're not, we just like you to be part of us.
Thank you for spending this time with us, and remember that God loves you, and so do we. Please know that you are welcome at Central Christian Center. For Pastor Hank and your friends at Central Christian Center, have a blessed week.